Hello and welcome to Selfie Torah. Here's something you may not have heard before. Apparently, in the days of Alexander the Great, who conquered the vast majority of the known world, including Israel and many of the surrounding nations, the descendants of Yishmael, Yishmael of course being the eldest son of Avraham, of Abraham, his descendants come to Alexander and actually they call the Jewish people to a litigation, to a court case in front of Alexander. Their claim, hey, you Jews have no right to the legacy of Avram. You've no right to the land of Israel because our ancestor, Yishmael, is actually the firstborn son of Avram. And according to Jewish law, according to the Torah, the firstborn child not only gets an inheritance, gets the largest share of the inheritance, a double share, no matter who his mother is. So the firstborn child of a father should get that share. And that's what, that was the argument they presented to Alexander. Alexander gives the Jewish rabbis a chance to argue. And they explained that in this week's Torah portion, right before Avram's death, Avram sends his children away with gifts. You may not know that Avram had eight children in, that the Torah records. Yishmael and Yitzchak, of course, we know, but six children from a wife named Keturah and quite a few grandchildren. And before Avram dies, he sends them away with gifts. And then the Torah says, and he gave everything he has to Yitzchak, to Isaac. And these rabbis argue to Alexander that laws of inheritance when someone dies only applies if that stuff is owned by them at the time of their death. But if someone wants to go ahead and give a gift before he dies of everything he wants, he can give it to whoever he wants. And the fact that Avram, during his lifetime, gave these other children gifts and gave Yishmael gifts and gave Yitzchak everything, that clearly shows Avram's intent to give everything he owns to Yitzchak and nothing um, in the future, no inheritance to Yishmael. Cool story. It's a medrash. And I think there's something we could take from it. And that is, why? Why didn't Avram spread his legacy out over all these children? Think about what Yitzchak accomplished, what the Jewish people have accomplished. Had Avram maximized his potential by having eight descendants spreading that message, imagine what the potential of the message of the descendants of Avram could have been. A number of years ago, I guess many years ago, I asked my rabbi, my Rosh Yeshiva of Henech Libwitz, said Sal, if a person is trying to work on something, a person trying to improve themselves, what trait, what area should he work on? And he told me something fascinating. I expected him to say to take the thing you have the biggest challenge with and work hard to, to change that. He said, no. He told me, take the trait that you find the easiest, the trait that you're the best at, the thing that you really, really are good with and are growing in, and then maximize that trait. Because you'll get a much better bang for your buck if you can maximize a trait that you're already good at. So if you're into learning and you're very good and scholarly, then work on your learning. If you're very generous naturally, work on being even more generous in giving. Okay, if you're a person who's naturally calm and doesn't get angry easily, become that incredibly tranquil person. And I think that's what Avram was doing. Avram, sure, could have spread Judaism out over eight different children, and there would have been more people. Instead, Avram said, no, I want to concentrate on the one best, the one most promising child. And of course, Avram did this with prophecy. It wasn't just his own decision. But nevertheless, he chooses Yitzchak and makes his entire future dependent on him because he wants to make sure the product is not spread out, is not watered down, but what we have is true, it's pure, it's in ultimate form, and have an Agil Shabbat.